Back on the sports mix zone, we begin with track and field history for three English-speaking Caribbean nations at the World Athletics Indoor Championships, which ended in Glasgow on Sunday. The English-speaking Caribbean captured six medals over the three days of competition, with the Commonwealth of Dominica and St. Lucia winning their first ever medal at the event, while the Bahamas also struck gold in world record style. Jamaica won most medals by a Caribbean nation with three bronze, USA topping the medal table with 20, consisting of six gold, nine silver, and five bronze. You can see that the three Caribbean nations with a medal each, Bahamas, as Dominica and St. Lucia finishing joint ninth, Jamaica finishing in 25th position. The USA was the only nation to win more than five medals. A closer look then at the English speaking Caribbean performances. None better than that of Bohemian Devine Charlton, who produced a sensational 7.65 seconds to win the women's 60 meter hurdles, upgrading her 2022 silver to 2024 gold. She took two hundredths of a second of the previous world record she held jointly with American Tia Jones at 7.67. An injury kept Jones out of the championship as Charlton won by almost a full tenth of a second. Also on Sunday's final day, Tia Lafon le leapt into Dominican history by winning the women's triple jump title with a national record and world leading 15.01 meters. The medal is Dominica's first at the World Indoor Championships and only their second in global senior athletics. So dominant was Lafon's performance that she only took two of her six available jumps and watched as the rest of the field tried unsuccessfully to challenge her winning mark. The other gold medal for the English-speaking Caribbean came in the Blue Ribbon women's 60 meters. Pre-event favorite Julian Alfred held her nerve to win gold, St. Lucia's first ever medal at the World Indoors, the 22-year-old doing so in a world leading 6.98 seconds. It was the fifth time Alfred was breaching the seven seconds barrier as she inched ahead of Merle Naughty as the most prolific Caribbean athlete in that department. And of course, Jamaica's bronze medals came from Akeem Blake in the men's 60 meters. That was on Friday, Rasheen McDonald in the 400 on Saturday, Kieran McLeod on Saturday as well in the men's long jump. Yeah. Quite a lot happened at the weekend. We are pleased to be joined in studio by Sportsmax.tv editor-in-chief and our in-house track and field analyst, Leighton Levy. Um, so Leighton Levy um, will be joining us, but Lance and Mariah, what a great series of performances this weekend from the English-speaking Caribbean athletes. Um, let me start with... Devin Charlton, because she set a world record, and that is special. Um, she did it in the build-up, of course, Charlton, um, 7.67. But to do it in a championship final, when there is pressure, we're having a look there at Julian Alfred, there is Charlton. To do it in a championship final, when there is pressure, is something special, one has to say. Yeah, and you know what? We've known for a long time that this girl is world class and um, her strength in her sprint hurdling is the strong start that she usually gets at the Budapest World Championship last year when the Jamaican Daniel Williams won gold. Um, Charlton led up to about 50 meters. So her issue in the 100 hurdles for outdoors is to sustain the early race dominance that she shows. So 60 meter hurdles for her is like a cakewalk. Mm -hmm kickwalk and um, I, I know the medals aren't handed out until the races are run but we are not surprised she won and we're not surprised that she broke the world record either because it was her own world record yeah mm. false start for Leighton Levy but we're not going to disqualify him we give him a reprieve <laughs> and welcome him to the segment for today Leighton <laughs> how are you doing what a performance from Devine Charlton of the Bahamas. It was sensational, wasn't it? Absolutely, Ricardo. If you remember, right after she brought the world record in the middle of the games, <clears throat> I spoke to her coach, Ronnie Green, and he said he felt she can go faster. He said a half a tenth. She didn't quite get there, but still, fast enough to break the world record. And I think when, when I had that conversation with him, what he indicated was she was a lot stronger this year, a lot more focused, and a lot more confident 
And given how we saw her open her season, I think she started out with 780 something and then worked her way down to 772, which was a world lead at the time, mm -hmm. then broke the world record. And then ran in Madrid. Wasn't as impressive, but I think at the time, maybe a little bit of fatigue before she went back home. And as the plan was, go back to the United States and work on their race before they went to, to Glasgow. And she delivered big time. I mean, it was a fantastic performance, especially since Samba Mayela, Mayela actually became the challenge that Tia Jones was expected to deliver. But Mayela came through, Samba Mayela came through and pushed her. 773 in the, sem in the semifinal, 774 in the final, gave her the opportunity to, to be pushed to that new record because I didn't expect anything from Masai Russell. History has told me and has been telling me that Masai doesn't perform well in finals. When she's under pressure, she tends to fold. And this was similar again, finishing fourth um, behind the Polish athlete whose name I will never be able to pronounce. But the fact is that she did. You mean Skriskalska? Yeah, well, you can do it. Once you can write it on dot .tv, you're good. I can't even write it. So. <laughs> Leighton, I want you to talk me through the, the, the technical execution of the race from Devin Charlton. One of the things that stood out to me is the way she drove from the blocks. To me, she drove from the blocks as if she was running a flat 60, as if she was at, at, one, at one stage I thought to myself, oh my God, she's going to run right into the first hurdle. Um, but she was so clinical. Um, and, and I thought that was quite amazing because I'm not sure if I see many hurdlers drive from the blocks in the way she did. Flamingo does, but, um, yeah, but this is a different dynamic because the hurdles <laughs> are higher. But the reality is that, yeah, she's... Look, what she's clearly been working on is the speed management and, of course, her speed between the hurdles. And what we saw from in terms of the execution, but I'm sure when I speak to Coach Green again, he will tell me what he saw in terms of the things that she didn't do correctly. Yeah. <laughs> but the reality is I think it, it was cl as close to being a perfect race, from my eyes certainly, as what could it, you can expect from someone in a final where the competition is, is, is fierce and the competition is intense. Because given what we saw from the French runner, she couldn't afford to slip up. Um, you know, she won comfortably enough, but at the same time, all you know is takes the clip one hurdle. We saw Megan Tapper hit the first two hurdles in the semifinal, and it cost her a place in the final. So the technicality of it in terms of the execution was, was sound, and I think she was really quick between the hurdles. I think she was a little tight in the middle of the race, but I think that is to be expected. But overall, I thought she ran really well. Yeah, what are we expecting to see from her come Olympics 2024? Well, if, look, it's still six months away or five months away. The reality is that it's, it's a different dynamic now. It's 40 meters more outdoors, and there are a lot more players involved. And the reality is that if she continues on the current trajectory, she'll be a favorite in Paris. I, think, I don't think anybody can doubt that. The fact is that Tia Jones is coming off an injury. Daniel Williams is the world champion. There, there are going to be a lot more players involved in, in Paris than we saw at the World Indoors in Glasgow. Yes. But if, if, if Devin continues on this current path, she's going to be hard to beat in Paris. Yeah. Yeah, one of the things that we've always said in sport is that when you become a champion, automatically you become 10 or 20 percent better because of the confidence and the self-belief and the self-assurance of uh, this new label that you, you've had. Do you think that Devin has that kind of personality to make that kind of narrative true? Yeah, and when you saw when she came forth at the World Championship last year, you could see how upset she was. Yes. Because she was, along with Amazon, she was one of the top hurdlers last year going into the, into the, into the World Championships. Now she's broken through. And it's not just a physical breakthrough for her. It's a mental breakthrough as well, because now she's done it. She knows what it feels like. And of course, so the next time she steps on the track, outdoors, going into the Olympic season, you would have to believe that she's, her self-belief is a lot more ramped up now than ever before. And she goes in with a certain level of confidence, knowing that I can beat the best in the world. I can win. And that makes her a bigger threat in Paris. Yeah, and Ricardo, I suspect that that would hold true as well for Julian Alfred yeah. and Tia Lafond. Yeah, for sure. I was actually just trying to look at the last athlete who won the world indoor title and won. then went on to win... Um, no, and went on to win an outdoor okay. crown yeah. um, or the next outdoor crown. I haven't gotten to that one yet, yeah. so it's been, <laughs> it's, it's been quite a while that that has happened. Yeah. But Julian Alfred, 
Listen, Julian, we are outside coming, huh? Mm. We've seen her progress over the last two seasons, especially to the point where she runs four se sub seven 60 meter dashes. Only Merlin Naughty had, well, she tied Merlin Naughty. She's yes. now the leader. Yes. Julian has had issues with her confidence and her belief over the years. She had had problems with her start. But I think all of that came together at the right time at the World Champions because, look, Soboda was not going to give her that title easy because that title did certainly the world leading time, 698, she ran in the semis. So, so Julian knew that she had a race on her hands because, as I said, Tia Jones wasn't there, but I think the legitimate threat was Soboda. And if you listen to her explanation after the race, and she said it, you, you, you have to understand and appreciate her thinking here. She knows that Soboda is a better starter. And she said all she had to do was to stay in touch with her because she has superior speed. She's a 10-8 and ten, turning towards a 10-7 sprinter in outdoors. So but that hasn't gotten to that level yet. So if she stayed close enough, she could track her down with her superior speed. She got a little bit tight late in the race, which is understandable, but she did enough to, to get over the line by 200 of a second, but that's all you need. And I think what we've seen from Julian now tells me that she could be someone to look out for. I mean, everybody's talking about Shakira Richards, and Shelly and Fraser Price, and Elaine Thompson, and of course, Sherika Jackson. Yeah. Come this summer, she could be another player, a legitimate player mm -hmm. from a medal on the podium come Paris, because now she has what she's been seeking all along, a title, a global title as a mm -hmm. senior athlete, her first as a pro. That's a good way to go into the outdoor season. Yeah, I'm keen to hear you develop on that point um, Leighton, because last year, when we were assessing worlds and so on, while you recognized Julian Alfred's quality, you did say that when it came down to the medals, you didn't put her in that conversation, even though we expected mm. her to do well. So but you now? are now doing that. Yeah, yeah I am doing that now, because um, you see, breakthrough is sport. Look, everybody trains pretty much the same way. Mm. The mechanics, the fitness, the strength, the conditioning. Here is where makes a big difference. Mm. And I think with Julian winning that title on, sun, on Saturday, that mental game just ramped up a whole notch where she can go into competition now, not necessarily doubting herself against the elite four now of the three Jamaicans and the Americans, but she now knows that she's likely to be able to match them. Because let me, for, for those Jamaicans who are probably now pulling their hair out, mm. The time that Julian Alfred won with this weekend is the same time that Shelley and Fraser Price and Elaine Thompson here have run indoors, 698, which is the, are the 11th fastest times in history. She's now joined them at that level. There's no reason to believe that with that additional 40 meters, given her strength, given her endurance, given the fact that she runs 2201 indoors, that she will not be able to contest and contend along with the likes of the Talu and other players who are on the cusp but are yet to break through into that, into that elite, of the, among the elite. And I think this win this weekend could actually do that for Julian Alfred. And she's 22 years old exactly. and improving exactly. all the time. Tia Lafon, what a performance. What a dominant performance. This Second round, 15-0-1, and, and said, that's it. So you're going to you do your thing. I'm cool. <laughs> um, when I spoke to Tia after she drummed the 14 at the World Championships last year, I said... This is obviously a new, new personal best for you. Were you happy with the performance? She said, no. She said, there are still some areas that I'm not doing as well as I need to do. Mm -hmm. So she, she still believed that she had room for improvement. And you saw that on that second jump. Her, all the phases were a lot better than previously. She opened with a 1460 at a little high school meet where she was under no pressure whatsoever. And you could see the development coming in the different phases. The first phase, the first attempt was 1440, I think it 1443. was. 1443. Yeah. And then she came back and she, she got everything, well, not everything, but certainly most things right. Yeah. From, the, from the first phase through the second phase to the jump, which was phenomenal, and got that 15 over. When I saw it, I literally dropped my pen because I was actually making notes. <laughs> and I was like, is that 15 meters? Because, you know, sometimes yeah. the, 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 the superimposed lines are not necessarily linear. Yeah. Yeah. And when, so when the measurement came up and saw 15 over, I'm like, yeah. And I reached out to her. She didn't, hasn't responded yet, but I'm sure she will eventually. <laughs> but the fact is that she now, I think now also becomes a player outdoors as well.
yeah. because the triple jump is not much different indoors from outdoors. The wind factor is not that much of a factor anyway. Yeah. So there's the reality is now, along with, with Daniel, with um, Sher 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 Shanika, Shanika Ricketts. Ricketts, sorry. <laughs> Yeah. She's now a 50 meter jumper, so you know the, the, the outdoor game is going to be a lot more intense this summer. Yeah. Mm. By the way, a few Caribbean women have gone over 15 meters Com in the triple jump, but none That's before it, no, no had done it indoors. indoors. So Two Taylor Cubans, yeah. is the first to do it 15 indoors. 15 indoors. 15 1. Yeah. So I want to get to the point as well, Leighton, about what this means for the lesser Antilles. Um, Tia Lafond was speaking about it where she said when she saw Julian Alfred win the gold medal on Saturday, she thought to herself, wow, I want to be part of this for the Lesser Antilles, to create history for my country of Dominica. We share um, cultural similarities and it's just great that we've come together in this global space to put our countries on the map. It is massive, isn't it? Listen. Back in 1948, when Herb McKinley and the crew were doing great things at the Olympics in 1948, mm -hmm. it created a sense of belief among Jamaicans yes. that they can compete with the rest of the world. I think it started before that, but I think 1948 galvanized the belief. Yeah. Um, with George Roden, of course, and you know Arthur Wint and Herb and Les Ling. Yeah. And we've seen it over the years build through to Lennox Miller, to Donald Quarry, to Raymond Stewart, to Usain Bolt, et cetera, et cetera. And along the women's side as well. Yes. With Merlin not in nineteen eighty when she first won the, Jamaica's first bronze in, in At Moscow. The Olympics, yeah. Right? Yeah. And you saw it progress over the years, uh, through, you know, Vernon Campbell Brown, Beverly McDonald, and, and you know, everybody knows the, the rest of the names. I think the success that we've seen from Julian Alfred and of course Tia Lafond over the weekend. Remember now, there are only seventy four thousand people living in Dominica. Mm -hmm. A hundred and seventy thousand living in St. Lucia. I think it will give young ladies, in the, young girls in those respective countries, a belief yeah. that we can now go out there and emulate this. Because and boys too, and like boys too, yeah, yeah, but, yes. but, more, but more the girls because it's more of a, con a, a gender connection. And the boys, I think, will more related. You think to, so, late? It does. I don't want to go into this discussion. No, 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 no. But, but let me tell you why. <laughs> yes. Um, when Donald Quarry was doing things in the 1970s, yes. everybody in my class yes. was wanting to run fast, not the girls. Yes. The girls were like, okay, let's go watch but some Layton, You know when I go on the street, right, and, and we're rushing us out of here, when I go on the street and I ask athletes, who is their favorite athlete? And I'm talking about male athletes now, and they consistently tell me Shelly and Fraser, Fraser Price, Price. Yeah, and these are boys. Yeah, I, I don't know if that... Why is that? Because, because she's great. Bed. Yeah, she's great, but also because you see Bolt retired in 2017. It, no, and we it's, have because, it's because she is the best lady. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not, dis I'm not disputing that so at all. They yes. who? But be between 2017 and now, yeah. no male athlete has really stepped to the plate in the sprints. But it doesn't matter that Shelly and his female, what they see as a champion in the yeah. same way yeah, I think is what agreed. they'll see of yeah, Julian but, Alfred and yeah, Tia Lafon. Okay. We can debate this for the cause, come on. The reality is this. <laughs> but but, Leighton, but I we think have it's to go. a major inspiration for yeah. those Leighton, we have to go, but I, I can't go without stealing this one minute. Jamaica got three bronze medals, Akeem Blake, Kerry McLeod, um, but the one that stood out to me was Rasheen McDonald. And I, I just want a quick comment from especially you, Leighton, on Rasheen McDonald. Listen, <laughs> when I saw his name on the list, I was wondering, because I'd never seen him run indoors before. 46-2, yes. 46-0-2, 45-65. In his first real campaign indoors, he, he, if it wasn't for these three ladies from the rest of the Caribbean, yeah. he would be my performer from the Caribbean. Absolutely amazing performance. Yeah. Remember now, Alexander Doom, the man who didn't remember Super Villain, I swear to God, <laughs> it's, a, it's the <laughs> nicest name I've ever heard. And of course, Carson Varholm are the people who beat him, yeah. and he was close. Yes. Yeah. And had he drifted over into lane one a little earlier, he could have been a little yeah. bit closer as well. Yeah. Kudos to him, and looking forward to seeing what he does outdoors. Fantastic yeah. performance. Yeah, by the way, his 45-65 performance is the fastest by a Jamaican outside Sorry. of the intercollegiate system. Yeah. Yeah, take from that whatever you will. That's it for this segment on the Sports Mag Zone. Hope you enjoyed. We rush into a break. We'll be back with more.